Hello noble ones and welcome to the remake of my most successful video, Top 10 Most Effective Martial Arts, released on the Metatron channel in September 2016. As of September 2018, the original videos reached 4 million views. So why a remake? Well in these two years I've gathered more experience in martial arts and my views on the subject changed completely. This top 10 list is striving to isolate and identify the most effective martial arts in terms of actual personal self-defense. Of course we do need to keep in mind that the most important aspect in martial arts is the practitioner. But martial arts styles do present very different systems applied with different training methods so I reckon given the same person styles will inevitably yield different results. If you want to learn how to fight you gotta keep it real. Learn what's legit and disregard what's dysfunctional. The styles you'll find at the top of this list are those styles that create natural fast reflexive movements with full power application. Facing the unpredictable nature of an opponent is to me the baptism of fire of all martial techniques. Before getting to the list, can I have two minutes of your time? If you like me as a content creator and you like my content, please take the time. You see, I've got an amazing project in mind and with one single click you can literally make the difference and finance this project for me without spending any money. Do you want to know how? So this video is sponsored by the game Era of Celestials and I'd like to use the earnings from this sponsorship to make a video series for you and more. I want to make a whole series dedicated to the European Middle Ages and to Japanese samurai castles. I want this series to be a historically accurate depiction of the medieval knight and the medieval people and a thorough description of the castles in Japan. Not just using pictures from Google, showing the real deal. Video games and movies don't do justice to the medieval times so I'd like to do just that. To do that I need historically accurate clothing, some armour if I get enough funds, I might even take you to actual castles, real battlefields etc. We love historical accuracy and there is too much misrepresentation out there. It's a big project but you can make it happen and without spending a single dime, that is what is awesome about this. I will put a link in the description below to be specific, this link. If you click that link you can get this game for free. You gotta do that on your iPhone or Android phone and make sure to use my link, that's how I get sponsored. So you download and install Aero Celestials on your phone for free and by doing just that you will be supporting both this very project and my channel in general as I will be able to increase the amount of regular Metatron video I normally put out on this channel. All of that literally one click right now. Aero Celestials is a free new mobile game, PvP multiplayer action RPG with cool 3D graphics. It's wicked. Transform into invincible Celestials and destroy demon hordes and discover divine Power. You can hunt bosses to get equipment and crafting materials, there is tons of items. You can engage in PvP battles and join guilds. The game has a large community and you can play with your friends of course. What I like about it is the epic feel the game has and the smooth controls and for a mobile game the graphics are pretty dope. Check it out, every download literally helps me and the channel out. So make sure you try the game to support me. Do not go to store, go through link and eat pasta. Number 10 Boxing. Now I know that some people don't really consider boxing to be a martial art, uh, they say it's a sport, or well, in my case I'm gonna call it a martial sport. But in any case, would training in boxing make you effective at fighting and defending yourself? Well I'm gonna say yes. Of course boxing focuses on the usage of your arms and punching strikes mostly, although there are a lot of different techniques. For but when you train to be a boxer there is also a lot of physical preparation within it. I mean training to be a boxer can be exhausting. You've got cardiovascular conditioning, speed drills and trends training. So there are some boxers that I particularly favour that I think that they were absolute genius of the noble art of boxing, for example Mohammed Ali. Now the reason why boxing is number 10 is of course the fact that you only strike with your hands. Although it is important to underline that yes you do use your legs in boxing, so you don't use them to attack but you do use them to dodge. Number 9, kickboxing. Well of course kickboxing is what it is, is boxing using also kicks. So if you've got a kickboxer who trains in a solid way and then has to fight in the street then it will be more effective in my opinion as a self-defense system because he's used to use both his hands and his legs to attack and of course a kick can be more powerful than a punch and also it gives you a range advantage to an opponent who's only using his arms to strike. Number 8, Judo. So again we are with the same dilemma, is judo a martial art, is judo a sport? But again I'm gonna say it doesn't really matter how you call it or how you classify it. In general, although judo has become an Olympic sport, some of the throws, grappling and throws that judo teaches and the sort of clinching that judo teaches can be very effective in a real life altercation where you need to defend yourself. Now the reason why judo is number 8 on this list and therefore I put it above both boxing and kickboxing is because boxing and kickboxing are 
are stand-up martial arts and of course they can be very effective but in my life whenever I've seen a judoka a person properly trained in judo with a high level of training in judo fighting against someone who's only got a background in stand-up martial art then oftentimes this is what happens fighters of stand-up martial arts they normally tend to first study their opponents throw in a few jabs throwing a few kicks that are not really meant to finish the fight they're mostly meant to sort of study their opponent's reaction so you, you don't do that with a grappler you don't do that with an experienced judoka the moment a judoka sees a raised leg and the moment a judoka manages to close in and grab you oftentimes the fight is going to be over because people who only have background in stand-up martial arts normally don't really know what to do on the ground then you can have an experienced boxer or an experienced kickboxer who manages to place a preemptive strike that will KO the judoka so it's not like a 10 out of 10 scenario but still I think judo can be a very effective martial art because of its focus on leverage and grappling. Number 7 Taekwondo now before people start screaming, did I not just say the stand-up martial arts are penalized against someone who's a trained grappler? So why did I put Taekwondo here? Well the reason is that you need to understand that there are two different styles of Taekwondo. You've got WTF and ITF. Now I myself was trained in WTF Taekwondo, I really like it, but I think on this list what should be here is ITF Taekwondo. It's actually quite easy to recognize WTF from ITF Taekwondo. When you see someone wearing a full body protector and you see them fight in the Olympics, that's WTF. When you see them wearing other kinds of protections but not full body protectors then that's ITF. The difference is both these styles are heavily loaded with kicks. I mean probably Taekwondo is the style with the most complete range of kicks that you could ever even imagine. If you can imagine it, it exists in Taekwondo. The problem with WTF Taekwondo, the one that we see in the Olympic, is that yes it's very acrobatic, yes it looks really good, in fact it's one of my favourite styles to look at, but it's actually quite incomplete. That is why it's actually not on this list. On this list is ITF Taekwondo. In WTF you're not allowed to punch the face and in fact there is only one sort of punch that is taught and it's limited to the chest area but still the lack of punching and the almost complete lack of blocking that you see in Olympic contests of WTF does make it a less effective style so if we were to be so WTF Taekwondo does not actually make its pla positioning placement on this list because it's a high risk martial art some of those there is a lot of dodging until you put yourself in the perfect position to perform one of those incredibly fancy kicks that yes if they land they will KO your opponent but a lot of the times as we see on the Olympics you fall on the ground and you don't want to fall on the ground when you are on the street on the other hand ITF Taekwondo is more oriented into self-defense as you are allowed to both kick and punch everywhere in the body so you can punch in the face so it is closer to kickboxing with the full range of kicks of Taekwondo and that is why kicks giving you a range advantage I think that an individual who is highly trained in ITF Taekwondo could prevent a judoka to get into the clinch position more easily than a kickboxer or a boxer could. Number six Kyokushin Karate here is another stand-up martial art but it's very very special we could say. It's a full contact type of karate that is incredibly tough and strong. Founded by Master Oyama Kyokushinkai Karateka practice in a very different way to sport karateka in that they don't only go full contact but they are also trained in taking hit. I mean I myself was training Kyokushin Karate when I was in Japan and it was incredibly tough. I would always go home with a lot of bruises. The reason being that you do a lot of sparring and when you do that sparring you do it full content and the aim is not to score points but it's to KO your opponent so even if you land a strike if it doesn't produce any result if it doesn't put your opponent out of combat then it doesn't count it's not gonna give you points when you hit they, you need to hit hard and you train constantly into being hit my favorite fighter in Kyokushin Karate style is Gary O'Neill and if you see what that guy can do it's like a fusion between kickboxing and taekwondo on steroids. Now the reason why Kyokushin Kai Karate style is only number six on this list regardless of how effective it is is because of a limitation that was included by Master Oyama and that is you're not allowed to punch on the face. That is really the only problem this style has. In my opinion it would have been better to just allow people to wear head, just headgear, full protection, even as black belts. The problem with that is that a lot of Kyokushin Kai Karateka believe that if allowed to punch the face then they will automatically know how to do it. That is not 
true. Sparring with the rule of not hitting the face with your punches will develop a natural blind eye from punches coming to the face and it will not be as precise as you would have been when trying to hit the, your opponent's face with a punch because you haven't trained to do it. What that developed though is that Kyokushinkai Karateka developed a natural ability to kick you in the face from punching distance which is rather remarkable to see. Number 5. Muay Thai Thai kickboxing is a brutal style. It's very similar to kickboxing but it's more brutal in the way it's taught and it's heavily focused also on a very effective usage of the clinch. So for a judoka to try clinch grabbing against a Muay Thai practitioner would probably be suicide. Similarly to Kyokushinkai Karate they also allow very strong and heavy kicks to the legs so not only focusing on kicks on the head like Taekwondo they also utilize the idea of KOing your opponent by hitting him so hard on the leg that he can't even stand. Thai kickboxing allows the usage of elbows and it allows the usage of knees and a knee to your teeth is automatic KO. Probably one of the reasons why the techniques are brutal and they work because they come from a basis of desperation and people who really need to perform exceptionally well on the ring. Number four. At number four we are starting to get to the point of something that really is focused on the concept of self-defense and that is the Russian style called Sistema. Sistema is entirely focused on self-defense. It throws groundwork, locks, grappling, but is also focused on the concept of free tension. So controlling your body and controlling your opponent's body, joints and areas that you can use to utilize his strength against him. It's a very complete martial art that is fully oriented on the idea of stopping the threat in the quickest way possible. Now the reason why it's number four and not number one however, I reckon that for a martial art to be fully functional you need to fight and you need to fight a lot. Now of course some of the things that they teach like you can't really kick someone in the groin and you can't really snap some a person's head for practice and that is actually one of the problems because if you don't do it then you don't really know if you know how to do these things and that actually will explain the reason behind number one and number two of this list. Number three, Krav Maga. Krav Maga or contact combat is a military self-defense and fighting system developed by the Israeli Defense Forces. It's a realistic fight training. It focuses on extreme efficiency, aggregating and fusing the concept of offensive and defensive behavior. So Krav Maga is of course similar to Sistema and some of the problems that I see in Sistema also appear on Krav Maga. As you probably know if you are followers of my channel, I don't particularly like the knife defense techniques. As you know, I'm not a believer in those. If you want to know what I mean by that, check out the link in the description below to my other video where I cover knife defense. But apart from that, it's effective, it's quick, it teaches both ground and stand-up fighting and if someone were to try to mug an experienced Krav Maga practitioner fighting in hand-to-hand -hand combat we could luck to them. Number two, BJJ. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is an incredibly effective martial art. It's a martial art that I've only found out about a year and a half ago and since then I've been watching or binge watching videos of uh, BJJ practitioners and it's incredible how strong these people are at ground fighting. It's a sort of Brazilian development of Judo and Jiu Jitsu or Japanese Jiu Jitsu techniques but what really makes BJJ incredible is the huge range of grappling and ground techniques and throws that these guys train continuously. So when you are an experienced Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioner and you have mastered all those locks over and over again and you manage to put your hands on someone who is attacking you on the streets then I, my money is on the BJJ practitioner. A lot of people say that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioners actually seek the ground fight. I'm not sure about that because I think it's more of a situation of if you put me to the ground I know what to do kind of thing and they do know what to do. Honorable mention to Bruce Lee's own teachings, Jeet Kune Do. The reason why Jeet Kune Do is just an honorable mention is because it's not a style and calling it a style would be a disrespect against the man who thought that every style was just a crystallization and you had to be like water. Bruce Lee was a legend and whenever talking martial arts it is I think very important to mention the man. Number one, MMA. Obviously it's because it's just a mixture of all martial arts but that's not how it is now. Given you do have some MMA practitioners who have got some background in other martial arts like Taekwondo or for example you've got Saint Pierre who is one of my favorite who has got a background in Kyokushin Karate. But MMA clubs, MMA gyms exist so now we could say that MMA has developed into its own martial art and its own style which comes from a mixture of effective techniques taken single-handedly 
taken from all sorts of martial arts, from stand-up martial arts to clinch martial arts to ground martial arts. So you can now have a personal own. So MMA is basically focusing their training on all those techniques that you can still do on an opponent you are training with or you are sparring with or you are fighting against in a non-lethal scenario that work and becoming a master of those can make you an incredibly tough individual to take on even on the streets where everything is allowed. MMA guys are incredibly complete, they can punch, they can kick and I think what's significant is that even people with Taekwondo background who fight in the cage tend not to use the fancy Taekwondo kicks but only use the flexibility that they have learned and the kicks that are sort of low risk and that they know they can work but even if you try and take an MMA fighter to the ground well he will have background A training now that is very similar to that of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu but it's mixed with, with all sorts of techniques that again work on the ring. So to me MMA is the most effective martial art because of its very nature which is that of mixing what works from all martial arts. Alright well I hope that you enjoyed this video, if you did please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron and also if you agree I'd like to know if you agree with this list and if you don't of course write down your list in the comments below. I'd like to remind you to please click on the link in the description below to download Aero Celestials for free as to support my channel and of course you need to do that through your phone and not through your PC please remember that and thank you so much for all those who are supporting me through this download I hope to see you again soon and thank you very much for watching and remember the Metatron has spread his wings goodbye <laughs>